really great, great to meet you, Mariah Carey. Great to meet you. And there's a lot of things to ask you. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, of course, The Ones is coming out with mm -hmm. all of your biggest hits on there. What is one of your favorite songs on that album? Um, Fantasy and One Sweet Day are probably my two favorites as records, like my favorite records on that album. Is it different when songs are sung live? Can you get different favorites? Yeah, I like to sing uh, Hero Live because it's pretty easy to sing and I can do different things with it. I don't do it like the record. I was going to put a live version of Hero on the album, but they wanted me to just put the regular version, so I said whatever. Because it's, it's amazing what you do with your voice. Thank you. And when you talk, you sound a lot lower in voice. Especially you know? today on two hours sleep. It's not my <laughs> highest and clearest day. Is that like, um, how did you find out that you could go so far with your voice? Like, Well, I always had a basically like this range. Like I was always an alto. My mother's an opera singer. She's a mezzo soprano. She has a really deep range. She can also sing high, you know, mm -hmm. it's got a very wide range. And, um, When I was little, I had even a raspy voice as a little girl. And I started like one time I was, I woke up and when, whenever I used to wake up, I used to speak in this really high little squeaky voice. And sometimes I still do it. Like I don't do it intentionally, but I guess I'm hoarse or something. I don't know if I can do it now. I don't think I can. I would show you what I'm talking about. But, um, and that was when I would like just wake up and I would, and I start thinking, My mom would be like, why are you talking like that? What is that voice? And I didn't know why. And then I started thinking, I wonder if I can sing in this. Like I used to always try and sing along with Minnie Ripperton when I was little. That's one thing. But I could never really hit those notes. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized that that was the same place in the voice when I would speak in that little high um, whisper tone, that's when I knew that I could do that. Because it's pretty unique, you might say that. Aren't you ever afraid? Like, you must be so careful with your voice. That part of my voice, when it's clear and it's on, I don't, it doesn't hurt me to do it at all. Like it's not a strain at all. And my doctor explained it to me that it's like your regular vocal cords are where you hit like your, your belting voice, like, or your, your airy voice, right? Like that mm -hmm. would be like my speaking voice. And if I were to sing in a belting loud tone, that's this, that's why men usually have a bigger vocal range than women. They say, because their, their cords are bigger. But when I do that high note, like the, the very high tones, That's the upper, upper part of my chords that most people don't use because I have this raspy voice, like naturally. That's why I have that. Wow. So it's weird. So some days when my belting voice is clear, that's more clear. Uh, and I mean, that's less clear. And some days when I'm really hoarse, I can hit high notes like forever. I don't know why. <laughs> well, it's good that you can, you know, we're very <laughs> happy that you can do that. But do you have to like be very, very careful uh, when you have a, like a performance or when You have to do a record. Is it that you're stuck in a house for a week and you can't talk, you can't do anything? Is it like that? Sometimes it is, yeah. I mean, you know when it would be like that? If I had a really important show in like a week and a half, I would probably start tomorrow on being good, not talking too much, trying to rest my voice, you know. But who wants to do that? Nobody. I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> But these are the things we have to deal with. No, nothing, you know. When you have something, you have to protect it. But... but You know, I want to have fun, too, so yeah. that's why I don't tour that much. Yeah. <laughs> and you also did a song with um, Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. How was that? That was good. I really enjoyed working with her. She's funny. She's cool. We had a good time in the studio. We didn't know each other before that. I'm just, my arm is hurting me from holding up my head this whole time, but I'm so tired, as I told you, I two hours sleep. <laughs> It was good. We We really... Got along well, and I think everybody was looking like afraid, probably thinking like, "What's going to happen with this?" But it was cool. Yeah, because people already say it now, like, "Oh, they probably kill each other in there." And not at all. But everything went fine. Yeah, I think you know when someone has a real talent, they're less inclined to really like take shots at someone or try and be, you know, competitive. There are other people out there who might not be as talented as 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 someone like Whitney, who tend to take shots at other artists to like you know, kind Pick of hype themselves, up. but she doesn't do that. You did so many duets with people. It's like amazing. Do you still have anybody left that you want to sing with? Because I think you already had them all. I've sung with a lot of amazing people, but um, 
one person that I that I idolize and love and think is like the greatest artist in the world and one of the greatest people in the world is Stevie Wonder. And I, I mean, like I get intimidated singing with people that are incredible singers, but he is just such a good spirit and a good soul that that would be someone I would love to work with. On the list. Mm -hmm. Well, that's probably gonna happen. I'm looking at your record right now. Like it's amazing. <laughs> and of course the duet that you did with um, Whitney is for um, a movie. The Prince of Egypt. Yeah. Right. And you are getting into movies as well. How's mm -hmm. that working out? That's going really well. Uh, Kate Lanier, who wrote Set It Off and who worked on the Tina Turner story, mm -hmm. um, is writing this project for me that I'm really excited about. And um, we got together, I guess it was like last month. She's off writing now. And we kind of set out, set the beats of the story and what's going on with it. Actually, my acting coach, myself, and Kate got together. And I'm writing the music around, like, you know, the specific parts in the in the uh, movie, you know, that will cool. be applicable to the songs or whatever, or doing certain remakes and stuff. And I'm going to start working on the soundtrack really soon for that. Can you already tell us a little bit of what it's going to be about? That movie is about a singer um, set in like the early 80s. And it's kind of maybe a little bit grittier than what people would expect me to do <laughs> for my first thing, but I think it's going to be really good. I think the soundtrack's going to be really good. And how do you prepare for, for something like that? Because it's totally different from what you're doing right now. Well, that project, I don't feel like it's going to take that much preparation because, I mean, because the, the character is a singer, I'm going to draw from a lot of my own Truly, yeah. experiences. But it, but that character has a different past than I do, has different things, has different things she's going to go through. So I'll apply different different things in my life that I can relate to those situations. Um but I've been studying acting for like two years, you know, really seriously. And before that, when I was a little girl, I studied as well. So it's not like it's something that I didn't want to do in the past. It's just something that I wasn't, wasn't really, um, wasn't really on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> on the big full again, agenda. Yeah, wasn't on the agenda. So now it is. They say like that project, you're talking about it like there's already... Another project. There's another project called Double O Soul, which is with Chris Tucker. That is something that we've been kind of going back and forth with and trying to make happen. And we're, we're really close. We were supposed to start filming in the summer, then the fall. But like with movies, things always get pushed back and pushed forward. So hopefully that'll happen before I start my other project because I really want to do that. But when my thing is ready to go, I'm going to jump into that. So. It's funny that you say like jump into that because you seem like a person who does that. Like, oh, that's cool. Just gonna jump into it and do it. That's what I how I am. If I if I make my mind about something, I have to do it and not think about it too much. If it's a big major decision, like other, I, I mean, I think things out a lot and really try to plan things out or whatever. But with some certain certain decisions, I just have to make them and do them. Because otherwise, you probably get scared or nervous or. Yeah, I, I can't do that. It's like at certain points in your life, you just know when it's right to do something and you just jump in and go. Is this like um? The Mariah Carey I got to know for the first time through music seems totally different than the Mariah we got right now. Mm -hmm. Is that like a conscious thing or did it just happen over the years? Well, first of all, I mean, I was really young when I started, so yeah. we have to remember that. That's whenever someone kind of grows up almost, you know, in the public eye, when you go from starting out as a, basically a teenager you know, and you grow up and you make an album every year and you learn the business, you grow up quickly. I mean, I was already, I already had a, the type of childhood that sort of forced me to grow up really, you know, quickly. I grew up on my own a lot, moved around a lot, spent a lot of time by myself, was very ambitious, got into studios and writing at like 13, 14, started backup singing at like 17, you know, so... Yeah or 16, and I, I, you know, then I got my record deal right out of high school, you know, I had like a year of struggling and I started making records. And the thing about it is, the person that is now, you know, seen on TV and speaking in interviews is who I've always been. But in the past, I was always made to feel kind of paranoid that if I had too much of a personality or if I looked too, I don't know, sexy or whatever you want to call it in videos or provocative, whatever, you know, that it would be threatening to people. And, you know, if my songs were too much to the left of center, you know, that it wasn't going to be acceptable to the masses. And I just 
you know, I, I got to a place in my life where it was like, look, this is what I want to do. This is who I am. You can't keep just, not that I look at any of the things that I've done in the past and say, oh, I, you know, there's certain songs I, I, that aren't my favorite from, from the past, but not that I look back and say, you know, I hate this or that wasn't me. That, that's a, another part of me. But now I'm just able to show other sides of who I am. You know, I have a personality. I'm not just like, I'm not just like a doll that sits on stage and <laughs> sings, you know, <laughs> whatever. So it must be kind of weird having a life like yours. Like mm -hmm. we're about the same age. Mm -hmm. And when I look at you, I just, I cannot imagine how it is. Do you sometimes, um, because you are so much in the public eye, don't you think that sometimes you miss being, not that you're not normal, but normal, the normal things? Um, sometimes when I'm doing the normal things, it's like, oh, wow, I'm doing a normal thing. You know, like sometimes I'll walk across the street, I'll walk down the block and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm walking down the street. <laughs> like, this is cool. Like, I did it the other morning with my friend. No security, no nothing, you know, just went to breakfast because actually I was up all night and couldn't sleep. So my friend lives down the street from me. I hadn't seen her in a while. And I went and I was like, you know, just doing a regular thing. So then you kind of appreciate it. But sometimes you'll do the same thing and then there'll be five paparazzi guys running after you like the other day. It happened to me too. So I don't know. I mean, I'm blessed to have what I have. So I can't look at the negative things and be like, woe is me. You know, that's that's tough, you know. With with what I have come another set of problems. Yeah, you know, true. with everything I have, you know, there's a certain price to pay. So what can you do? Nothing. Just, just <laughs> keep it moving. Oh, people, sometimes you read about Mariah Carey and you also read negative things. You agree with mm -hmm. me and they say, oh, she's such a hard person to deal with. And But they don't see. You must be, maybe you are a hard person, but you're also a very social person. Because when I just look here, all these people here doing interviews all day, not having any privacy, right? people probably don't understand the life that you have. Does right. that bother you? Like negative things like that, does it bother you? First of all, if anybody who knows anything about this industry and any of the other artists in this industry thinks I'm difficult, then they don't know anything about anybody in this industry <laughs> because comparatively speaking, I mean, my life in and of itself is complicated, but me as a person, I'm not a difficult person to deal with. I know what I want. I know how I want things, but I don't treat people who work for me or who work with me like dirt. Like I've seen a lot of people treat people who work for them like, you know, you're a peon, you know, they, and that's, to me, that's just unacceptable behavior. That's, you know, be, maybe because I know what it's like to come from, you know, I didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't born into this. You know what I mean? Yeah. I grew up, I struggled as a little kid, you know, I saw my mom work two jobs, you know, and and I never, I don't take anything for granted. So if people think I'm difficult, then they should go spend a day in the life of some other people I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cleared up now, right? <laughs>